Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished watching the fourth Terminator movie, which is Terminator Salvation. Uh, before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. And uh, yeah, before we actually start, let's let's have a moment of silence for the Terminator franchise. Okay, that was just to pay our respects to a death. So, Terminator, that was corny, wasn't it? But I don't care. Terminator Salvation, wow. Um, I didn't think it could get worse than Terminator 3, but this is way worse. I, like, I, w I would watch Terminator 3 again just for like how bad it is, right? Like, it's so bad it's good. But uh, this one, man, there's no reason to watch this ever again. I am never going to touch this film ever again under any circumstance. There might be a scene or two that I could YouTube that are pretty cool, like the first T-600 they encounter, but yeah, there's just no reason here. So the plot is, uh, this is the first Terminator film that uh, breaks off from the formula. So we are now in the post-apocalyptic future. We're following John Connor, who's played by Christian Bale this time. Uh, he's leading his human resistance, but not really. He's just kind of like a guy in charge. He's not the top, top guy. That's Michael Ironside in this. Um, and uh, he is just trying to stop the, the machines, obviously. And um, he, uh, his, his leaders discover a device that's capable of shutting, potentially capable of shutting down uh, machines. So they try to test it in the field. Um, and that could be their salvation, I guess, right? That's the name. Um, and uh, we also have a few other things going on. John Connor's kind of the main character, but not exactly. Uh, the real main character is more like Marcus Wright. This is some criminal guy from back in time who uh, volunteers to go under an experiment and he's turned into a cyborg. Um, and uh, he's still alive in the future, but he has no idea what's going on, so he's very distorted. Um, and we also meet Kyle Reese, who's played by uh, the Chekhov guy from Star Trek, and um, this Kyle Reese is actually younger than um, uh, John Connor, so even though John Connor's the son of Kyle Reese, Kyle Reese is younger than him in this film. It's pretty weird. So, yeah. And they, I don't know, I don't really know what the purpose of it. I guess the purpose of the film is to try and stop the machines, but, spoiler alert, they don't. They don't stop the machines. In fact, one of the final lines of this movie is, the war's just beginning, which just makes this film even more redundant than it already was. So, yeah, this is like a filler crap. So, positives, uh, the T-600s were kind of cool, but I wanted to see... You know, I wanted to go past the T-1000 and TX. I wanted something even more badass, right? I guess there's that giant robot, but I don't know. They actually went backwards here. Since the, uh, they went for quantity over quality this time, so the amount of Terminators they're fighting, there's a lot more of them. And I guess for logic's sake, they had to make them weaker. So there's like, you know, there's like 10 plus T-600s in this rather than just one T-800 like the other film. So, I don't know. But they did look cool. I mean, they were pretty... I mean, even that picture right there, it's pretty scary looking, right? They do look pretty scary looking. So I guess the props are good. I did not hate the Arnold cameo, I'm not gonna lie. I actually thought that was kind of funny. Uh, there's a de-aged Arnold Schwarzenegger in this, and it's pretty funny looking. I, I did like that. Uh, but that's about it, yeah. Um, so, problems with this movie. So, I mean, we're just gonna ignore the fact that Skynet should not exist, in my opinion. Uh, Terminator 3 already ruined the lore, so we're just going to forget that and move forward. So, in this ruined lore universe, um, I felt this movie would have worked better if it was a little bit more epic and bigger state. Uh, the stakes are actually really low, um, if you think about it, because not only does, like, basically no side really injure each other by the end of it, Skynet and humans are kind of, they're, they're at the exact same level from start to finish. They never really get the upper hand on each other, uh, so that's a problem, obviously. And um, the obsession with Kyle Reese was an issue. I think Kyle Reese should not have been in the film, especially if you're not going to have Sarah Connor in the film. And I want to mention that Sarah Connor is the only half-interesting character in this entire universe, other than, like, uh, the Arnold T-800s, right? Who's not even really a character. So, John Connor cannot carry a story, okay? I thought the last John Connor with Nick Stahl was bad. The previous one with the kid was not that great. And Christian Bale's John Connor... Might be the worst yet, and that's coming from a huge Christian Bale fan. I give him plenty of his movies, 10 out of 10s. Like, he makes some of the best stuff out there, but no, this, he is not John Connor to me. I did not see him, uh, I didn't see how John Connor was supposed to be super important. He did not feel that important in this. Um, I'm sure there's like a hundred other men just like him, you know? Like, I don't think he's the guy to save humanity, but 
apparently is. But here's the bigger issue. So Kyle Reese. Kyle Reese is the number one target of Skynet in this film. John Connor is number two. So why is Kyle number one? Because they don't explain why he's number one. It's just like supposed to be assumed. So if you're asking me to assume why he's number one, well, I assume it's because the film thinks that if Kyle Reese dies, then uh, John Connor won't exist, but that's not how it works, okay? Like, I no, that is not how it works. The film seems to forget that aging is a thing, you know? When Kyle Reese ages out, you remember, let's say he dies of natural causes at 90 years old, John Connor doesn't just magically disappear from history. It doesn't work like that. You can go back in time and kill someone, but you can't kill someone in the future and expect it to change the past, if that makes sense. It's so bad. It's, it's dumb. I mean, Terminator 3 lore and time travel stuff was already pretty bad, but it's even worse here. Um, so, Kyle, Re Kyle Reese was an issue in this film, John Connor was an issue in this film, and Marcus was honestly an issue too. So all three main characters uh, were bad. I did not... Yeah, they were... It was not good. The story in general is very uninteresting, and also I want to say the color palette is completely gray. There are literally only two types of colors in this. There's gray and explosion. That's it. There's not a single other color of any kind. It is so lifeless and dull to look at. It, it's painful. So, really, really bad. I mean, think about other depressing worlds like The Walking Dead, The Last of Us. Those worlds are not gray and dark and, you know, terrible. They're, they're still fairly vibrant. So, I don't know. I, why would the machines just completely decimate the Earth? Like, what, what's their goal exactly? Actually, I'd love to know their goal. I'm kind of on Team Skynet after this film, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, John, uh, John Connor played the bad guy for quite a few... In the middle of the movie, he was kind of the bad guy. So, I'm on Team Skynet now. I think the humans are annoying. I think they're kind of stupid. And uh, their time travel logic makes no sense. But honestly, Skynet's equally to blame. They don't make any sense either. They're constantly making terrible decisions. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, so the the other thing is there is no new TX or T1000. There's like no new improvement on the on the model, except Marcus Wright is supposed to be the first ever infiltrator, but like he has no special abilities. The only thing different about him is that he thinks he's a human. <laughs> so it's like, what? Why is that? Why is that the step up from the TX? I don't know. So yeah, where are the TXs by the way? Where are they? I know I realize they can't produce them like thousands on the scale, but, uh, like, you must have at least a handful or something, right? Where are they? They're, they're not in here. So, this, this film almost felt, like, disattached from the other ones, but I think it's supposed to be in the same timeline. I think all four of these movies are supposed to be the same timeline, but really, I think of it as the first two, and the third and fourth are its own thing. It's really hard to connect those two together. But in this timeline, in this universe, Judgment Day has happened, the war continues to rage on, and, uh, there's no ending in sight because the franchise wants to keep going. So who the hell knows where they go from here? Um, I was I was thinking about a 2 out of 10. You know what? I think I'm going to go with a 1. I'm actually going to go with a 1 out of 10. I don't think there's any redeeming qualities here. And uh, I gave Battle of the Five Armies, The Hobbit, a 1 out of 10. And I would rather watch Battle of the Five Armies than this again. So you know what? Yeah, Terminator Salvation gets a 1 out of 10. It is actually unforgivable. It's a gray, lifeless waste of time, completely uninteresting, uh, uninspired acting, stale characters, and just ruins the lore even further and just continues to ruin it. So yeah, 1 out of 10, Terminator Salvation. I did recommend you watch Terminator 3 just because it, I mean, there's, there's some bang for your buck with Terminator 3. I almost want to raise Terminator 3 now that I've watched this, but I'm not going to. I gave Terminator 3 a 3 out of 10. I still think it earns that, but man, Terminator 3 is so much better than this. Holy crap. Uh, so yeah, that was embarrassing. Do not watch Terminator 4.